It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I'm Tom Papa. Thank you so much for coming along on another journey through comedy and food. It's really what it's distilled down to, isn't it? Lots of people talk about food. Lots of people talk about comedy. We're going to mush it all together. Hey, a thank you to Wine Access for sponsoring this episode of Breaking Bread. Wine Access curates some of the best wines at exceptional values. They make it easy to explore new regions and varietals. Check out my favorite varietals today through my special page, wineaccess.com slash papa, P-A-P-A, and use the code PAPA to receive $20 off your first purchase of $50 or more. It shows all my favorite wines that I've gotten through Wine Access, and it gives you a little money off. Pretty great. More on that later. Hey, we have a great show for you today. We've got uh, Jackie Cation coming on the show. So funny. One of my favorite comedians. Um, I've worked with her for years. She's so smart, so funny. She is a uh, uh, podcast host as well. The Dork Forest is one of the great podcasts out there. She also does another podcast, The Jackie and Lori Show with Lori Kilmartin, another equally funny person. So great. Both of those are amazing. And Jackie is really the perfect person to talk about uh, food heading into Thanksgiving. Such an American holiday. Such a, uh, a great, passionate person. Uh, when I say passionate, there's a lot of things that, that she's excited about. But let's be real. Uh, she comes from Wisconsin. And there is a mac and cheese discussion we have to get into. There is also her love of baked chicken. Uh, she, She's so obsessed with baked chicken that she's actually working hard on putting together a, a, a calendar featuring all of her favorite baked chicken dishes. She's so great. You're going to love this conversation. She's just amazing. Uh, what have I been eating? What have I been eating? What am I planning on? What am I thinking? What am I eating? What am I drinking? Well, we're coming into Thanksgiving, kids. Not only are we coming into Thanksgiving, we're coming into the holiday season. And it is a whole season where you should be eating and enjoying yourself, especially this year. I mean, come on. We've done a great job. Hey, I'm proud of you. You're doing great. You really are. You know, we've come this far during this crazy pandemic. We've put in a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice. So I don't want to hear any whining that we didn't get to go on a plane and go visit grandma. I don't want to hear any complaints that we're not going to have that many people over for Thanksgiving this year. There is still food to be made, there is still time off to be enjoyed, and you should jump on it because you deserve it more than anything else. You deserve a break. You deserve to screw around, eat, drink, and be merry, and not just on Thanksgiving, but I want you to do this. I want this philosophy to carry you through the end of the year. Yeah, enjoy yourself. And, uh, and what are you going to be cooking? What are you going to be doing? Here's the thing that excites me. Whenever we come into Thanksgiving week, I know that the turkey is a big thing. I know that putting together the menu is a big deal. There is this one satisfying little activity that I have that I'm going to share with you now that just, I can't tell you there's something, the final product is great, but it's actually the process of doing it which is just so enjoyable. And it's so simple. It's so easy. Uh, this is a spicy red pepper cranberry relish. Let me say that again. Spicy red pepper cranberry relish. Everybody loves the, the, the great cranberry debate. I get it. There's the canned. There's the real stuff. Uh, all every, there's uh, whatever side of the argument you fall on I'm with you I'll go canned I'll go fancy whatever you want you can't lose but this one is the best hands down <laughs> I don't care about your little canned addiction I don't care that grandma made it that way this is kick ass 
I'm going to read it to you. This uh, comes from the New York Times. I got this recipe from David Tannis, and this is part of the food section uh, featured in Essential Thanksgiving. I'm going to read this one little paragraph for you. A kicky condiment, usually made with cranberries, can offset the neutral, red, bland, yet rich nature of the Thanksgiving meal. This hot red pepper cranberry relish with jalapenos and cayenne fits the bill. You can keep the seasoning somewhat tame or ramp up the heat to taste. It will keep for two weeks or so. So make it in advance as soon as cranberries are available and have it on hand in the fridge through the holiday season. Good advice. I actually make a lot of it and then eat all of it. So I don't get to hang out and enjoy it and break relish out throughout the season and then, hello, Christmas, I'm still eating it. No, I make this and then go nuts and just eat <laughs> it nonstop. It's so simple. Sugar, I'll put this uh, recipe link up for you all. Uh, sugar, two large jalapenos, one tablespoon of lemon juice, half a teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of cayenne, one tablespoon of grated ginger, and 12 ounces of cranberries. So the heat's just coming from this quarter teaspoon of cayenne and two large jalapenos diced, de-seeded, or just seeded, and finely diced. Uh, that's where your heat's going to come from. I recommend ramp up the heat because, as I found in my house, the kids, they look at this lumpy cranberry and they're like, nah, we'll pass. Give us a slice of that can thing. I am one of the only people, it's a grown-up thing. Eat it. Make it spicy. Go all in. If people don't like it, then you get to just keep the heat on and eat it yourself. It's so simple. Now, but this is with the satisfying part of it. This is the thing I was starting off to say that I, I really enjoy. You know, you put the sugar and the jalapenos and the lemon juice and the salt and the cayenne all in the saucepan, right? And you get it all cooking up. You have to put it into some water, half a cup of water, stir with a wooden spoon. I love that they say wooden spoon. Wooden spoons are my favorite. Dissolve the sugar, let it simmer for two minutes. And then you add the ginger and the cranberries. Okay, so now when you're adding cranberries, you have this bag full of cranberries. Big, red, not big, red, pretty big cranberries one bag is 12 ounces it's all you need there's this satisfying thing about putting these cranberries into this pan and you're cooking it over low heat and these cranberries slowly t start to split and not pop open like popcorn but they explode, <laughs> minor little explosions. You've got your wooden spoon, you're smelling the ginger, it's just the, the it's, and you're just stirring it around and this pan filled with these red balls starts to dissolve, pop, and erupt. There's something about that process right there, that little explosion, that is incredibly satisfying. <laughs> You're going to have to do it just to, to, to figure it out. I, I You got to experience it. It's like trying to describe, uh, you know, hitting the perfect golf shot or, or, uh, or, I don't know, having sex, something. Like, you can't describe it. Just go and do it and you'll get it. You stir those cranberries, pop, 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 and all of a sudden it's this relish starts to develop. And then at the end of it, you scoop it all out, you let it cool off, and then, like they said, you can it can be stored, stored in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. Let it cool. I make it the night before. I make it the night before I want to use it and then just heat it up a little bit. It is so good. You will be so happy. It's got a little kick. It's got a little cranberry. It's got a little ginger. It feels like the holidays. You are going to be delighted. So that's my little tip for you. The rest of it, figure it out on your own. You're gonna go, you're gonna go turkey. You're gonna do all the rest of it. Have at it. This is going. This this makes it special. This makes it. You need a little curveball in this meal, even if it's big, small, in between. You need a little bit of whoa. I haven't had that 
Nana didn't make that. Spicy red cranberry relish. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, kids. Now enjoy the uh, conversation that I have with Jackie Cation. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit at the end. And um, enjoy. She's so funny. And you're going to learn a lot about baked chicken and mac and cheese. More than you'll ever need. <laughs> enjoy Jackie Cation. Here's yeah. one of my favorite Zoom things is to go, hey, can I see your dog? And then watch an entire gallery screen do this. <laughs> and uh, that's fun for me. That's it's good so times. Funny. Well, thanks and for then doing this. Sure. And then there's the thing that can be abused, which I, I'm loath to tell anyone publicly, but I like to do send a private message that's something supportive or funny, mm -hmm. a, a private DM via the chat, and then pin their tweet or pin their image and then watch them read it. It's a desperate cry for help. That's what I'm saying, Papa. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad what's become amusing to us. But I thanks know. Thanks for being here. This is really great. I, um, I've been trying to get on your podcast for about 10 years and it hasn't been <laughs> able to happen. So I figured I'd get you on Attainable mine. goal. Attainable goal, my <laughs> friend, as I say every time, and then we don't book it. So uh, allow me to book it for next week. Uh, are you around next week? Uh, of course I am. Okay. <laughs> where, am I, where am I going? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you were in Cleveland last week. I was. I did a good run of, of stand-up during the pandemic. I had and like once a month. I did five clubs, uh, only places where I thought they would do it safe. Yeah. Safely. Yeah. I did uh, Salt Lake City. I did Denver, Portland, Connecticut, which was kind of safe. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, and then Cleveland was the last one. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. Um, Denver. I'm doing the Loveland uh, Theater Ooh, nice. that Comedy Works does um, uh, in December. And then oh. I'm supposed to do Milwaukee. Cause that that sounds safe, doesn't it? When you when you hear Milwaukee. the words COVID and Milwaukee, don't you think? Yeah, that's probably they're probably doing it right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, how are you going to handle Thanksgiving this year? Um, we're going to sit in my. We have been going to my mother in law's uh, every where's, week. Where's she? About about three hours north of Los Angeles. She's in the Central Valley, Devin Nunez turf, and uh, oh. so we go. We sit in her backyard. Uh -huh. And she's kind of in our pod now as we go into the third month of us. You know, we're not going anywhere else. Yeah. We go to her. Uh huh. So um, she's in our she's in our pod now. And, How old is um, she? She's in her mid seventies. Okay. And, she, and she's a little tippy, right? <laughs> she's a little frail. Uh -huh. so, um, we're trying to keep it real, so we're gonna have it outdoors. And he's got uh, my husband has some cousins and our nephew and we're all right. going to be outside with masks and we're going to or we've ordered we're going to order uh thanksgiving where they give us just plates of food uh it, it's to go oh really yeah it's a weird little town so the central valley of california has she's lived there for like 20 years uh -huh. and um she used to live in this town called Lindsay. Uh -huh. which is an orange the, an orange processing plant uh, and and place yeah oranges and olives and then uh for 15 years she lived there and then she moved and then they bowled in a town called porterville uh -huh. and so there was this there was the lindsay porterville was, the food was terrible uh <laughs> it was there was good mexican food but that was and that's fine and i yeah. enjoy mexican food and it's a delight uh you go one town up which is where they retired uh -huh. uh, one town up <laughs> and it's called Exeter and Exeter, California is a delightful small town with more than one espresso machine. <laughs> just one town over just one, like <laughs> 15 years. She could have just gone a little further, <laughs> 11 miles North. And so when they moved there, I started wandering around, you know, I was yelping. I was trip advisor. I was looking for things to, and they have a French restaurant. Whoa. They have some vegan places. Wow. It's closer to Visalia, which has an amazing Asian community with a wow. bunch of different Asian food. <laughs> This now, is, is a she, food podcast, but right? Is, yes, but is she interested in any of this? Uh, 
She is now, because Cation keeps bringing it to her. Well, here we go. <laughs> Have some of this. But in downtown Exeter, there's a place called the Hometown Emporium. Ooh. And uh sounds like it should be in the in the um <laughs> the music man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Main so, Street Disney. <laughs> maybe, exactly. It's just like, young man, watch your phraseology. Great hogs, <laughs> ye gods. And so I they have deli sandwiches and really good pastries. It's a patisserie. Ooh. Ooh. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah. And so uh, I have insisted in the last three months that we eat there twice. <laughs> and um, and then and, and she's like, well, you know, there's a KFC advice. And I was like, stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> I'm not going to greasy, greasy KFC. And I love chicken with the power of the sun. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, there is a there is a a guilty pleasure. Same way with pizza when you bail out on like all the, the great places that you know of and, and go for a pizza hut. Yeah. There's, and it's like, you know what? There's a reason these people are in business. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Pizza Hut is actually what we've discovered in quarantine, my husband and I. And oh, really? <laughs> we're uh, once a month, we'll order Pizza Hut. It's good. And, and it, there's over one... Domino's? Over Domino's? Over Domino's, yeah. over any any of it. Uh, and then, and it's three blocks from our house. So it shows up piping hot, oh, which is a good. delight. And I have to say, this isn't a plug by any means for Pizza Hut, but. Their app is one of the best apps, I think, of oh, all apps. <laughs> we don't even yeah. use we don't even use an app. Oh my God. It's so easy to use. Like when I'm on the road, if that that's the only kind of fast food, I don't think I would even call them fast food that I'll eat on the road. It's pretty fast though. I will say this though. <laughs> um fast. I got a I got a uh, a weird text a couple of months ago from Kathleen Madigan, who mm -hmm was starting a podcast with uh, Lewis Black. And uh -huh. then they both started their own, very weird. Yeah. But uh, cause they had one together. They were just like, okay, just, this is just drunk people sitting next to each Just like their and, relationship. Exactly. <laughs> together and then apart, but always together. But always together, but always apart. Yeah. And so, but uh, she, so she qu qu questioned me about podcasts for like an hour and we just uh -huh. talked and I had sent her some links for tech and stuff like this. And, um, so she, I get a text from her saying, what's your uh, guilty pleasure fast food? Uh -huh. And I was like, this seems like blackmail kind of, info I mean, yeah, that's how, are you, how are you going to use this? Uh, how are you going to use this information? <laughs> what are you up to, Madigan? And, right, exactly. And so I tell her, because we're friends, right? How could I not? Uh, and so I tell her that it is McDonald's. McDonald's is, and like maybe four times a year. Uh-huh. I'll go to McDonald's and my favorite thing at McDonald's because <laughs> and I'll only have that like once or twice yeah. because yeah. it's so it's just a it's six thousand it's a sausage and egg and cheese McMuffin. Yeah. Yeah, like a breakfast McMuffin with sausage and five egg days and of worth of calories. <laughs> right. And so she had a tea because I helped her and because she has her own self-esteem issues, she had a t-shirt printed for me that said sausage McMuffin, sausage egg Mc... <laughs> all those words. And then with it, she mailed it to me, uh, a gift card for McDonald's. <laughs> That's for awesome. too much money. I mean, the really? thing is, is, yeah, $50. If you want to spend $50, I still have 10 bucks on it. And I've eaten at McDonald's four times since she sent it to me. Of course, everything's a dollar ninety nine. Now it's free, <laughs> you know. And because my other thing I don't, I will have but there is the Happy Meal, uh -huh. and I'll have the Happy Meal because of the toy. <laughs> You've always been into the toy, <laughs> and I always get I the boy. This. This is, this is a, wow, this is, that's I, a good toy. I, it's a real nice Palomino. It's got a little bit, it doesn't have a lot of uh, articulation, but it's got a little articulation. Yeah, anyway, that's beautiful. Too, I always thought they would like, be like, like a Cracker Jack style, oh. lame plastic oh, no. pinball thing. No, it turns out they're very powerful in the uh, children make toys industry. <laughs> and, uh, and they insist that they have good articulation. I first, Taco Bell had one of the greatest like it was a prequel Star Wars uh -huh. and they had a magnetic, uh, it was a magnetic millennium Falcon uh -huh. no, or no, it was, it was, the, it was a prequel. So it was a different ship, but it hovered. Oh, what do you mean? Using oh. magnets. Ah. So it would, it would, it, it was a thing that had a circle and then you put the ship here. Yeah. And it hovered. Oh, fancy. <laughs> now but when I you say articulation, that's very important in the, the 
in, in, in the, the uh, in, in the action figure world action figure world you want to you want it to be able to move a little bit you want a little action yeah you don't want you don't want like a statue you don't want to i mean right. some people do some people enjoy a tiny statue but look <laughs> at this look at this is uh uh dr strange uh-huh and he has pretty good articulation. Uh, the cape comes off kind of fun, uh, but uh, <laughs> but it doesn't like the best one I've got doesn't is, really move. Right, it's the best one I've got is a is a is a magnetic Spider Man with uh, magnets on it, so you can put it places, and he's super poseable. So <laughs> that's what you want with an action figure. You want super poseable, unless you're a child and you're just playing, and, and you're you like. Don't care. Horsey, yay, horsey, and then rawr, and that's not how horses talk. Now, how much? Okay. How much of the? How much of the Happy Meal toy, uh, toy enticement, is connected to your McDonald's guilty pleasure? Like, if Pete, if 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 the Burger King people were better at the toys, would you change oh, allegiance? It would. It would not. The one time that I got that Taco Bell, I hate Taco Bell. I don't enjoy a squeezy food, and um. <laughs> It's squeezy Andy's food. Andy's favorite. That's his guilty pleasure is the squeezy uh, food of Taco Bell. And it is. <laughs> everything's in a gun. Have you been? No. <laughs> it's foul. Oh, I thought you uh, meant like the taco itself where the burrito is squeezy. Oh, no. They 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 have a tortilla and then squeeze meat, squeeze no. avocado, squeeze uh, <laughs> creme fraiche. Creme fraiche seems unlikely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sour cream, <laughs> <laughs> sour cream yeah. ish, ish, something <laughs> from a cream-ish. from an exit in New Jersey, some beautiful exit in New Jersey uh, that's creating food like substances. Now, if I'm correct, though, so wait, so yeah, so if I'm correct, I think I see on your Instagram from time to time you guys banging out some pretty impressive looking meals. We. We're, we we like to cook. We don't like to bake. I we, well, he does. Right, Actually, right. he'll bake. You make bread like a madman, and I can do a drive by curbside delivery at any time. Tom. Oh, you're getting bread for doing this podcast. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, yes. the dork. When you do the dork forest, you get a T-shirt and like twenty bucks for a cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> via good. Venmo, that's fine. It's no, uh, you just, will uh, be getting bread for sure. But I could tell what kind from of your. Bread? Um, well, sorry. Well, I digress. We'll Let's talk, talk about it. We'll but talk, we'll talk about it. I could go. I can give you a straight up sourdough, like a country loaf sourdough. That's we could, exciting. We could do a little rye. We could do a. If you do, you like olives? Yes. Uh, Andy's been making soda bread, Ooh. savory, savory soda breads. That's good. He, he was talking about making a sweet soda bread, and I was like, "Why would you ruin it? Why would you?" I, I'm going to give you the straight up sourdough. Oh yeah, I'm going to give you the straight it's, it's, up. It's, mm. Let's start with the yeah, sourdough. Yeah, it's the classic. It's the classic. Let's, then, then we'll get to see it. We'll get to see the. We'll see the work. Right. That's exactly. the beautiful thing. All my annoying. All my annoying posts of showing the bread. You could actually eat it now. <laughs> right. It's so. Here's the scoop. For probably 20 years, I've been working on a chicken calendar. Uh-huh. A, chal- a calendar of baked chicken. Uh, <laughs> looking for 12, 12 recipes for baked chicken. Ooh. And I have uh, consistently had nine. Like uh-huh. a new one will come in. I'm like, well, it's too much like that one. So it goes. Uh-huh. And, I'm you know, interested. there's 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 a pattern with a couple of them that are sort of a Moroccan, like the a North African, Mediter- you know, have a Mediterranean. Like I'm Armenian and Irish. OK, that's, that's what this old school peasant stock is made out of. <laughs> and um, very beautiful. And so it'll be some of those spices. And then I do like a North African spice uh, mix. Even though I also like, like there's, uh, if you go further south, like Togo, uh, uh-huh. uh, there's more of a, they do real good African chicken is happening a little, like yeah, I what? I wouldn't naturally put cardamom in chicken, uh-huh. but I think I should, like I should try to figure <laughs> out how to, how to do it. And then what's there's a, a, what's a North African spicy, spicy chicken? Oh, like it's, what, it's, what it's the. That? It's a basic, it's sort of much like Armenian and Turkish and Greek and all the, it's cumin, coriander, right? Uh, garlic, uh, often sometimes lemon, mm-hmm. and then um, cumin, and then salt, pepper, right. and then sometimes a yogurt mint. Like Ooh. there's, I, I have a yogurt mint marinade Ooh. with some cumin and coriander. I have a rub, which is cumin, coriander, cinnamon. Wow. Um, rub. And wow. Now, where do you get your spices? 
Like, do you go straight up supermarket? Just go get straight them? up supermarket. I understand that there's fancy spice. My sister goes to a fancy spice online and I was like, you, I believe, make three times what I make. And uh, and I am not poor. <laughs> I don't need but... this. Right. I don't need this golden <laughs> <And> I... turmeric. <laughs> right. She also has this whole thing. Right. It's like, <laughs> where do you get your saffron, Jackie? And I was like, uh, first of all, I need to use saffron. And um, and I and... like saffron, but. Ralph's. It's mostly Ralph's <laughs> and it's or Whole Foods is the fancy one, right? Where I'm like, and it's quite honestly, I don't understand enough about saffron. I would kind of be interested to find out. There's been a couple times I don't even know what it was for, where I had to get saffron and it was it, expensive. And you it feels get it, like you use a teaspoon of it. And then it sits in your cabinet forever because nothing else calls for saffron. Right. And you can put it in rice. And because what uh -huh. I found is that it mostly just makes things yellow. And right. I was like, <laughs> what am I missing? Is it yeah. old? Is I, I'm sure that my saffron is old. My sister also does this thing where she empties. She throws away all of her spices in January. Yeah, well, I have had a I, um, Mario Batali told me the same thing. He said, like, the first thing you can do, this is back when he was around was <laughs> that go oh, in before he was touching people publicly or <laughs> no, it was public publicized that he was touching people uh, whatever yeah i don't know i was focused on his advice on the spices <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> which was he was saying that it was go throw everything out that you have in there because i guarantee you with how much you're using it it's all kind of expired at this point well, I do run through the cumin and coriander pretty quick. And, um, mm. but what I do like is that uh, I have a Spanish, like Latina, let, Latino kind of Mexican X esque mm -hmm. um, supermarket in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. And they sell herbs in bulk and they sell herbs in tiny packages that are 99 cents. And granted, uh -huh. they may not be organic, they may not have had a rattle. Shake, shake it over them and we looked at the moon <laughs> right. but i'll tell you something they taste like bay leaves and that's what i need sometimes i need bay leaf also very good with a chicken yeah so. i mean look if you were to throw everything out and replenish the this when you throw a spice in when you're doing your regular shop that's like throwing a bottle of wine in i mean that stuff right. is not cheap <laughs> you can't just be chucking all of it right it's expensive and yeah. then and the other like the one that you probably just saw was I made um, essentially the best macaroni and cheese. That's what it was. Yeah. And it's, and the thing is, is you can't, first of all, I will disclaimer, if you are making this around children, <laughs> do not call it macaroni and cheese. They'll get angry. They, they'll get angry. <laughs> yeah. They will refuse to like it. That's right. On principle alone. <laughs> Why is that? Kids are the worst with that. It, it really takes them until they're about 15, 16 years old to open their minds to anything other than Kraft macaroni and cheese. Right. But if you don't tell them it's macaroni and cheese, if you just go, well, it's noodles and cheese. <laughs> and then then they're like, the hell is this? This is amazing. It's and so uh, and you're like, stop swearing. You're seven. And but the um, but the the crazy the like my sister's kids. She makes chicken nuggets for them, uh -huh. but she doesn't call it chicken nuggets because it isn't chicken. It isn't from McDonald's. It isn't. That's the, what that's their idea or, of what a nugget is. Right. So she does. She takes panko and ch and skinless, boneless chicken breasts, which, are, as far as I'm concerned, are an abomination before God and man. <laughs> yeah. And she chops them into the correct size and then uh, breads them with with panko and, and spices and stuff and then fries them. <laughs> and they're chicken nuggets, but she's like, I don't call them chicken nuggets. I call them, what does she call? Uh, uh, chicken that she. These aren't nuggets, mom. <laughs> right. <They're, laughs> I'm not eating them. <laughs> right. So they're, they, she calls them something else. It's like crunchy chicken or something like that. Right. She calls them something else. And then they eat them and, and love them. Of course. Of and course. she also and they also, of course, like going to McDonald's and having gristle that has been formed into and then deep fried. Yeah, particle so, board. Right. And they're fine with that too. <laughs> and she's like, you gotta build a palette. You gotta build a there's nothing I can do. They're 10 and 13. No, she's so, so right. There's literally that they literally it's the phrasing of it. If you just yeah, because I look, I don't know. I wanna <laughs> I wanna I wanna hear what was in your mac and cheese, but I remember. Nick DiPaolo way back telling me 
about this mac and cheese recipe that has, that was predominantly blue cheese oh. and it, and this crumbles and it was so incredibly good and then for 15 years couldn't make it in my house because what am I going to do with a tray of mac and cheese that no one will eat <laughs> <laughs> on principle on principle alone it's no secret how much I love wine but I still as I am out there exploring and learning and developing my palate and in having just a good time with it it's nice to have some friend along to give you some guidance and walk you through it all and that's what's so great about wine access they're curating some of the best wines at exceptional values and it makes it easy for you to explore new regions and varietals now i've tried some amazing bottles from wine access they're so good uh there's there's been some that came through and you're like no nah, it's not really my taste and then you get to mark that of okay maybe that isn't really for me and then they send you another bottle of the same region and you're like oh okay and then you start because everyone's palate's different and you that's what's good about it you get to kind of lock in they sent me this brunello uh i don't know if i can even pronounce it it's a, it was a 2015 pietrinera 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 yeah 2015 pietrinera brunello de montalcino oh man oh man for me, when I'm doing when when I'm going full on Italian, the Brunello is kind of you can't you can't lose. They're so good, and the range is I don't know. I find them to be pretty consistent, but this one was just man off the charts, off the charts. I really I would have um, I would have kept the bottle around, but uh, it's actually there's this one section where if a bottle of wine really hits it out of the park, I just put it on the shelf and keep it and then throw the cork up onto the top of the cabinets. So when I move at the end of all of this, I'm going to have this collection of great moments. And this bottle completely, oh, mwah, grazie, grazie. Matteo Lane told me it's grazie. Grazie, Wine Access. So Wine Access, great selections, helping you all along. Go to wineaccess.com slash papa, that's P-A-P-A, -A, and you'll see some of the wines that I highlighted that I really have enjoyed and that have uh, uh, been provided by wineaccess.com and that you can share, you can see what I've been into, and also $20 off your first purchase of $50 or more. I'm telling you, COVID times, pandemic times, you, you, don't, want, you, know, you, you don't want to really linger in the aisles right now. Just go to wineaccess.com. Trust me, slash Papa, P-A-P-A, -A, and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. This is a good way to do it. You sit at home, you get this great bottle, you price it out, you do the research, you get everything done, and it shows up at your house. You can't lose. Thank you, Wine Access. Grazie. So what was in like, yours? Because I remember so, your post was that you wanted, you asked for it. You, you right. wanted this big comfort mac and right. cheese. And Andy was like, Cause, cause you know, we've been ordering out, trying to support and, but, but like once a week we'll order out. And, yeah. um, and so I was like, well, so what are you, what, what are you, what are you interested in? He said, <laughs> not tonight, but soon <laughs> I, and I'm, he's like, I'm willing to shred. I'm willing to do the shredding and, uh, which is the <laughs> biggest problem because literally this mac and cheese uh -huh. is two pounds of cheese. Whoa. Uh, a stick of butter plus a, to oil the uh, butter the pan, uh -huh. and and it makes nine by twelve, right? I mean, it may, we're yeah. we've been eating on it for th three days, and <laughs> yeah. we're halfway through. So, and I'm like, I could have another plate, and he just looks at me, and I'm like, No, I know, Captain Moderation, <laughs> I shouldn't have another plate full of mac and cheese that you insisted I make. What kind of cheese? White sharp cheddar, mostly uh -huh. eight to 18 ounces of white sharp cheddar. Nice. And then eight ounces of Gruyere. Oh, this is great. Right? This is yeah. grown up. This is grown up uh, noodles and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> and and then two and a half cups, I think, of whole milk. Ooh. A geez. stick of butter <laughs> and the extra butter for the pan. And uh... then you make, uh, you essentially, you hot up the milk. Uh huh. You shred all the cheese. You um, <laughs> you t you butter the pan. You put the butter in in a skillet, 
the rest of the butter. Uh, oh, and croutons on top that oh. have been that you tiny because there's not enough carbs. Mash them up. So so you just you toss them in melted butter, like two tablespoons of of the stick of butter. The remaining six tablespoons, you melt that. You put in half a cup of flour and make oh. a roux. Uh -huh. and then slowly add the milk and thicken it, thicken it, thicken it, thicken it. <laughs> and then you have a pot of this milk that you then put the cheese in. You cook the the noodles until they're just before they're al dente or al dente, whatever what kind of do. noodle did you use? Just a straight up macaroni, pound uh -huh. of noodles, okay. it's a pound of noodles. <laughs> right. so this will feed 10 people if they are not monsters and four if they are me. <laughs> oh, so, and I'm on my own and I, there's no witnesses because uh, who needs a witness when it comes to food? Uh, God is judging you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, yeah. So I, I pour the um, you, you put the noodles and the cheese and you mix it all up and you make sure everything's coated and everything's good. You pour it into the big pan, uh -huh. you put the croutons on top uh, and then you sprinkle what's a, a, you reserve a little bit of the cheese. Uh, to sprinkle on top, like you put most of it into the cheese sauce and mix the noodles in it. Yeah. And then you sprinkle it on top of what's left, just a little bit of Gruyere, a little bit of cheddar. And then you put the croutons and then you bake it 30 minutes. So the oh, whole thing, like if you do it as a team God. and someone yeah. is willing to shred, uh because -huh. uh, the shredding is genuinely the most irritating thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, no, that's, that's so, a lot of work for sure. Now, this is high class because you could have just gone the... Kroger's big bag of cheese. Oh, right. We could have already pre-shredded. Weirdly enough, bought Kroger's cheese and then but bought it in a block. But that, that's because I think it's fresher if you buy it in a block and, and, and shred it. Uh -huh. I don't I don't know that there's there's any proof of this, but I also believe that if you buy a whole chicken and cut it yourself, it's fresher. Yeah. I do, too. I do, too. I think because it hasn't to tossed that. like nine knives. Right. There's just well, there's here's the thing. And too. a chicken. Yeah. And I, I found this out with uh, tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, whole tomatoes, tomato puree. Canned tomatoes? Toma yeah. The best tomatoes are left for the ones that are whole. And then the ones that are a little damaged or whatever, of course, you chop those up and make them into the thing. So you could only think if you're chopping up the cheese or the chicken, whatever. This is a fun fact about canned tomatoes that I will now go forth with. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also is... put the recipe in the chat. <laughs> oh yeah, I just saw that. That's perfect. Thank you. Sure. So that's a, that's an amazing. So now after three days, do you feel like your mac and cheese hankering is pretty pretty good for the year? <laughs> yeah, like literally, this is a special occasion mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. I make it probably every three years. <laughs> to, is it weird I... that it matches up during? <laughs> that it always matches up during stressful presidential elections. Uh, makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. There's Mommy, nothing to help be done. Me. <laughs> exactly. I would like to be comatose cuz here's the other thing I did. Andy's family they have turkey at, at Thanksgiving, but they don't uh -huh. love turkey. Uh-huh. I Guess know. Who I, I'm bird people. I'm I I'm am, poultry. I'm with you. So I made you. a turkey but the thing is, is I'm having groceries delivered like the Rockefeller that I am feels very fancy. fancy. Uh, but um, when you allow someone else to shop for you and you're like, no, I just want like and you can't really get a whole turkey that's less than probably five or six pounds. I know. And I so know. I, I ordered a turkey and I was like five or six pounds. They brought me a 10 pound turkey. <laughs> so I have baked a 10 pound turkey in the last three days, too. But uh, it's great for stock. Like I, and then I, then I would get make stock, and you know, and this wasn't for Thanksgiving. This was just to make a turkey, right? Because we're gonna go sit in our my mother in law's backyard, Mama right. Foley's backyard. But I'm just With gonna delivery. Well, well, how much turkey am I gonna get? Is there gonna be enough turkey? Is there is there, is there gonna be turkey sandwiches? What's gonna <laughs> what, what happens in the next three days? That's what, what I've been thinking. I, I know. <laughs> I, I got I got issues. I got issues. This is my shit, I'm man. The <laughs> I'm the same way. But you seem kind of early. I mean, we're oh, it's early. Yeah, we're we're two weeks early for this thing. But the thing <laughs> is, is if I eat all the turkey now, I will want more turkey in two weeks. <laughs> right. Andy will be like, "This is fine." Yeah, and uh, but he what's likes. His, what's his background? What is he? Uh, literally, this is weird. When I met him, it was a weird thing. 
he considers like his family's been here long enough. Like my family just got here and uh, uh, probably a hundred years ago. Uh-huh. So his family got here. <laughs> he considers himself Southern <laughs> as like an, almost a nationality. Like he's, he's, we did the 23 Weird. and me dude is 99% whitey Magoo. He is, <laughs> he is like Welsh, English, Irish, Scottish. It's all British wow. Isles. Wow, and that is white. That is super pale, super yeah. white. And so he's all that. And then, um, and so, and his, and his great, 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 whatever, showed up in Louisiana in 1861 or two, Whoa. which meant that he was drafted into the Confederate Army. Wow. If he would have landed in New York in 1862, he would have been drafted into the Union Army. Sure. Uh, but so his... Both sides of his family, both his mom and dad, grew up in this small town in Mississippi, about an hour 15 south of Memphis. Ah. And so, uh, as you can imagine, the end of this sentence is, they love pork. <laughs> yeah, big time. He's a, he's a pork big guy. barbecue. Yeah, and he'll do weird things with meat and fruit, which I'm not a fan of. But that, I think, that crosses all kinds of <laughs> yeah. ge- geographic yeah. boundaries. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's completely insane. I think, but what, but he could have, in the same way that fate took him from, took his heritage from the north to the south, uh, he could have easily been full on chicken. Could have, he loves chicken. But no, quite honestly, I've never met anyone who's as obsessed with chicken as I am. Uh, I freaking, I that rhymes. I love chicken. I love and but it, very. I freaking love chicken. Very specific though, baked chicken, fried chicken is not my jam. No, bone. It's okay. I don't uh-huh. mind it. Right. Uh, like there is a restaurant right by us, uh, uh-huh. and get this, it was a ca- check cashing place, and the guy put a grill outside. <laughs> And now he has half a block. Whoa. It's awesome. He is, uh, it's his family, I think, is they are um, all kinds of Latino. They, he's Cuban, uh, Guatemalan, and Puerto Rican uh-huh. all mixed up together. And oh, so boy. This is gonna they be good. have some, ama- they, so they have grills. And you can get two chickens, two full chickens with two rices uh, and two beans, <laughs> black beans, uh, the other kind of beans, the uh, pintos, uh-huh. and then uh, yellow rice and white rice and two full chickens and tortillas for like 35 bucks. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that's amazing. Yeah. You don't I mean, you know, how like rotisserie these, chicken at that store is like six dollars. These are like amazing grilled chickens. These things are popping up. There is a place. My daughter goes to dance and I pass it. It's uh no ho fried chicken. And it's like, it's, it's the same thing. Like you, this guy, it's, it's literally looks like an RV. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, had, and then they added a grill to it. And then, yeah. they, and like this amazing heritage is just cranking out this fried chicken that just beats everything else you can find. Here's, here's an amazing pop-up that we've gone twice. They're mm-hmm. only open Saturday and Sunday mornings from 7 a.m. to 10.30. They <laughs> pop up in Circus Liquor parking lot. Uh-huh. The big clown. Three, yeah. Three Armenian guys. <laughs> and they make Bostroma and Sojuk uh, torti- uh, burritos and tacos. What's so it's Bostroma? like this. Bostroma is essentially an Armenian prosciutto or Ooh. if it's dried an armenian jerky oh my god uh, this stuff isn't dried it's it's fresh and yeah. sojuk is a sausage it's a, it's an armenian sausage and so a burrito a quesadilla a taco and it's called something like bread and breakfast that's the because i follow them on instagram because you got to follow them on instagram to figure out where the hell they're what pop because yeah. if they for <laughs> a long time work. Yeah, because yeah, for a long time they were over on Magnolia near Lanker the Shim over there, uh-huh. Lanker Shim, and now they're in Circus. Or the last time I went was in Circus uh, Liquors parking lot, and I and, <laughs> Is and it they're amazing? just it's amazing. The burritos, yeah. the Bostermon burrito, is oh my god, I it's gotta a, go. It's delightful. Wow, I don't know from Baster, Bostermon. Yeah, Bostermon, it's uh, it's fun. Um, in Wisconsin, because I'm from Wisconsin and Wisconsin Armenians, we only got it dried. And so when I moved to Los Angeles, I was like, what are you doing to it? And they're, 
this is a prosciutto like delight right. and it's super garlicky Ooh. it's like the flavor is this very black pepper garlic kind oh. of spice it's so if you're gonna wow. make out with somebody they gotta eat it <laughs> you gotta eat it too yeah they both you both have to eat it i didn't know there was a huge armenian wisconsin i always think when i think wisconsin huh. i always think more like germanic Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Germans, Polish, Italian, uh, uh, Northern, more Swedes and um, Norwegians. Right. South is more German and Polish. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's there's a lot of Armenians, sort of Chicago, Milwaukee area. Right. In between that, that, that came from Boston. So there's like waves, like there are with every single country that's ever come to the united states yeah there are waves of people that came so and my grandparents came after world war one from the genocide uh -huh. and so they they land first in new york some of them go to boston pile uh -huh. of Armenians in boston and then some of them chicago and then work their way up to milwaukee and then minneapolis and then um the, uh a lot of them new york fly over just go right to fresno uh, by land and, yeah. and then bleed down into Los Angeles because they want to be famous. And, uh, and who doesn't, who doesn't want to wear a sweatsuit that matches your pants? And just like, I don't know if, uh, it was a comic. Oh, I'm spacing his name. Oh, well, but he had a, uh, he used to do this, uh, character of his uncle, his Armenian uncle, a stand-up yeah. comic. Yeah. And he had a rip away Adidas, uh, sweatsuit. That sweatsuit. Was, that, that, that was, was adorable. Yeah. It was pretty great. So, so back to your calendar. Yeah. You have a love of baked chicken and you've got only nine months. And right. Got, so, so you need, so you need three more and you, they're tough to find. You're not able they're to, tough crack to find. They're tough to find. I'm not able to crack this. I wonder, like, I, I, uh, I wonder if, cause there's, there's, there's the basic chicken, which is what my stepmother, it was literally one of the only things she was good at cooking. She uh -huh. didn't like to cook. Yeah. She didn't care. Right. And she knew we had to eat. Yeah, but the kids have to be fed. <laughs> Here, there are six of you. Here's a pile of food. Yeah. Eat it. Don't eat it. Uh, but this is all there is. But I made it. And, and I made it. My job so is she, done. My, my task is done. One of you is going to be doing uh, dishes. One of you is going to be dry, uh, drying the dishes, washing, drying. We had like a, a schedule set up, set up. It was very much like a restaurant. And um, But the, the chicken that heard basic chicken was just this. It was cut up chicken. I almost always cut up chicken because it cooks more evenly. Right. And... Um, she would, you know, do the thing. It's called chicken. I, I call it chicken of the gods because it is the perfect <laughs> basic chicken. Yeah. Salt, pepper, garlic, uh, maybe a little dab of butter on each of the, the things if you want to crisp up the skin for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you bake it at a, somewhere between 350 and 400 for 45 minutes. Uh -huh. And then you try not to eat it all. Uh, that's the, I mean, literally it's just salt, pepper, and chopped fresh garlic. Sprinkle it over it. Make sure. That's and you can. Takes. Right. And you can do the things that we've learned from the Food Network for the last 20 years, which is <laughs> start cooking it at room temperature, salt it before to draw out the moisture, make sure that, uh, you know, yeah, who cares? Right. Uh, it is almost <laughs> idiot proof, yeah. our basic chicken of the gods. You could make it and it's delicious. And so that's the basic. That's recipe. good. Is that your is that your your go-to like yeah. if you're just going to make it you just do you do yeah. any do you do any of the baked chickens that are coated breaded uh no no i i, I actually don't i don't uh like sort of a, a, a fry bake like what looks yeah, like kind of a like a like a like sheet a, pan kind of chicken yeah. you know like roll it in breadcrumbs and butter that kind of a thing no it's people what you're doing there is you're taking the flavor of the chicken Mm -hmm. and you're hiding it uh that's not what i'm interested in but uh, <laughs> but the weird thing is that's why like a boneless skinless situation yeah irritates me so much i was like i get it you don't want the fat that is the skin and you don't want but a lot of the flavor is in the bone and skin I so know. if if you cook it normal and then take the skin off and give it to someone who doesn't care, yeah. uh, who's just going to eat it. Oh, and, I'll and take you, it. Exactly. <laughs> the best part. <laughs> right. And if you want to debone it then and make sandwich, you know, make sandwiches or a chicken salad or something like that, it still has that flavor because it was yeah. cooked in those things. 
Jackie, but, I literally today was every once in a while, you, you know, you, you look in your freezer and it's just chaos. You can't yeah. fit. Everyone's just jamming things in. It's like, <laughs> let me go through and see what's holding up the works in here. <laughs> I took out a, a pack of boneless, skinless chicken breast from 2017. That was. Oh, that was there. a good year. That was because, a good year. Because obviously I was I don't know why I bought it, but I never wanted to make it. And I left it in there for three years. <laughs> exactly. Mary Mack, you know, Mary Mack, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, she, her mom has a freezer and she's preparing for the apocalypse, not realizing that the apocalypse, uh, there won't be any electricity, uh, but she's got really <laughs> old meat. And so sometimes Mick will uh, go to her mom's house and like, she's like, 2017 was a good year for poker pork roast <laughs> and she'll she'll take some of the older meat and just cook it just because she doesn't want it to go bad that's um, hilarious oh how many years how many years can you keep it i don't know but she eats it and she lives so <laughs> i don't know that that's the best andy has one of the greatest uh chicken recipes that's on the calendar all right and it's and it's bone in skin on chicken thighs oh in I a, like a good thigh. in a in a tarragon popover. What? What do That's you mean? That's the correct response. Wait, a tarragon popover is sort of the Yorkshire pudding of the world, right? You make a popover mix. Uh huh. All he does is salt, pepper, tarragon. Uh huh. Pan fry the the skin and sort of brown it. You uh -huh. you, br you brown the four. He makes it in um thighs. He makes it in a one of the big cast iron skillets. Uh -huh. So he browns it in oil, I believe vegetable oil. And uh, after doing salt, pepper, and, and tarragon, he brown, 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 brown. Uh, into, <laughs> and, and then he mixes up the popover mix, which also has tarragon in it, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Ooh, pours boy. that over it, bakes that for 40 minutes or so. <sighs> wow. Just pours Yay! it on top? Just pours, pours it on top and bakes it for like 40, 45 minutes. And Whoa. I think it's in his Betty Crocker. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the yeah, old. The old school. Better Homes and Gardens, maybe? Right. I think Better Homes and Gardens. <laughs> Popular and... mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is amazing. And it is, and that has been our go, that's been my sort of comfort food in, in quarantine, quite honestly. Like once every two weeks, Jeez. I'm like, will you make the tarragon popover? And he's like, yeah. I will. <laughs> oh man no when you say you pour it over so he and then bake it in that same skillet mm -hmm. just in that skillet that he fried in that with, giant that he fried pour with. it on top put that in the oven yep and then sort of shake it up to sort of make sure that the, the chicken isn't sticking it kind of gets under it a little but this sounds like something that you're not into where you're covering up that's like breading the i you would think you would right? think that is the only you are right that is the only yeah. i full of hypocrisy this well you love happening? him you love him and he's right i'm just willing for to... you <laughs> you're not having to cook it that <laughs> night <laughs> he keeps wanting to add cherries to things and i'm like stop just eat cherries why What's is that? why why would you want to put pineapples on ham uh -huh. cherries or prunes or apricots i actually I again hypocrisy there is in the list an apricot chicken. It's a, it's a, it's more of a Moroccan. It's a North uh -huh. African chicken, but the apricot, it's an apricot couscous that goes with that chicken. Oh, that sounds interesting. Apricot couscous. Good times. Yeah. I don't really understand it completely, but I'm intrigued. Right. Cause I usually don't like my sweet and savory mixed much at all. Yeah. And, uh, but for some reason, apricots aren't super sweet. Mm-hmm. They're just a little tangy. So yeah, like, a and a lemon, something. I'll have citrus on stuff, you know? I know, but it is kind of a thing, like all of those. It's like, yeah, it could be interesting. It could be a fun little tang, but do mm -hmm. you need it? <laughs> <laughs> but do you really need it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're going to go up to Thanksgiving. You're going to go up to the Central Valley. And True. then some, someone will bring you some stuff. And it'll be all right. We'll pick up. it up over at the Emporium. The Emporium is doing uh, some sort of turkey thing. You right. can either get uh, and it's a nickel because once you get out of a major uh, <laughs> out uh, of LA. city, yeah, yeah, everything is free. They're just I, handing you things. It and literally feels like that, doesn't have it? Have you ever eaten in Milwaukee? <laughs> have you ever eaten at a restaurant <laughs> in Milwaukee? Here's one of the several of the restaurants my father likes to eat breakfast at. Uh, 
if you order two eggs, you get a third, just in case they break an egg. And they've never broken an egg. So he's like, just order one egg. You save money. And I was like, you're killing me. And uh, I don't want three eggs, though. So, yes, I guess I'm eating two eggs. Yeah. And then the other thing is, and they're all Greek family restaurants. He loves a Greek family restaurant. Oh, yeah. And so that's what that's the extra egg is a weird thing in Milwaukee. Here's the other thing. So I go to this place in Kane, Wisconsin, which is the next town up. My town is called South Milwaukee. The uh-huh. next town up is called Kane. And then it goes Bayview. Whatever. It's a great story. Right. So we're at the the restaurant. I think I'm getting um the lunch special with uh-huh. I'm there with my last friend from high school, uh, that I kept in touch with for the last 30 odd years. And uh he is a good egg. We sit down. I get the chicken. I get the chicken. And uh, and it's a baked chicken. It's lovely. Uh-huh. And uh, I think it's called broasted, which I don't know what the hell that means. Uh-huh. Baked you? and roasted? Maybe. Maybe. Roasted? And so anyway, but it comes and I am in, uh, I'm happy because it comes with a little bit of rice peel off, a little bit of veg. Uh-huh. And, um, and then, but it also comes with super salad and dessert uh-huh. and coffee. Ooh. Eight bucks. <laughs> Eight dollars. Right. So she. Oh, my God. We come for the bill and she, I get the pie. <laughs> and I'm like, this is insane for eight dollars. And she the panic in her eyeballs, Tom. Yeah. She goes, no, 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 no. You didn't. Wait, that's that. That's the lunch special. I thought you ordered the entree, which comes with the soup salad and because soup and salad. That's right. And uh, and pie and coffee. That one's nine ninety nine, and I was like, I got two bucks over here. It's all gonna work out. It's all gonna be. It's all gonna be okay. And oh my god, we live in the wrong place. We oh, it's so delicious. It is. It is literally my the thing I hate the most. Well, I mean, besides the rampant death about right. COVID, yeah. is that I need. I love to go to a coffee shop. I love to go to I a need- restaurant and have them fill my coffee cup I over know. and over. And I drink too much coffee. I know. <laughs> and and you, I can like I go on Ventura Boulevard and I uh-huh. see the outside dining. And Andy calls them the brunch Covidians, um, <laughs> which I don't think he made up. I he said he that's read really it great. <laughs> but brunch Covidians is awesome. That's awesome. I was like, can we be brunch covidians? He said, it's not our religion, honey. And uh, so I'm like, we're not allowed. (laughs) I know. I know. I really do miss just that smallness of just being sitting for a good couple hours. I know. 45 to an hour with somebody you like. I used to do, I would host these comedy brunches. Yes. Over at the Magnolia Grill on Magnolia. Yeah. And I'd just be like 12 comics who, and I would have it at like 1130 comics are up by 1130. Yeah. Uh, so they would come and for like an hour and a half or two hours, we'd sit around and it was a great way to hear about gigs. Right. It was a great way to uh, sort of exchange the hilarious stories of yeah. terrible rooms and yeah. And, just and it all just room. leads to you feeling less alone. Which is yes. what is the biggest thing of all of this is we are all now in semi-retirement and <laughs> yes. it's and we're too young to be living that way. <laughs> I know. And I, you know, I'm in my garage because we right before we went into lockdown, we were going to do a fancy thing with the garage, but it was too expensive. Uh-huh. And so we did what is kind of a fancy thing. We have a tiny room attached to our garage now. Nice. This, uh, this, this, that, that door oh, we're right, in it there. right now. We're in oh, it right now. Are, yeah. That door used to just be a shed where we stored spiders, and now it's a closet where we store spiders. <laughs> nice. And uh, and then there's this little room that I can use for podcasting and and all awesome. the things. Awesome. That's brilliant. Yeah, and uh, Andy has he teaches, and so he's teaching remotely as well. And we right. have a little we have a little house, but it has two bedrooms. So he teaches in the extra bedroom. Right. And so there's three rooms, which is two more than some people have. So I'm very grateful. Yeah. Uh, but three rooms where we can do things. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> so he, he was like, uh, he's got to run actually to the farmers. There's a farm stand up, up to, cause my mother-in-law wants to make a butternut squash soup, which is delightful. Nice. She wants to add a spaghetti squash to it for texture. <sighs> Yeah, I'm I would with like you. To, I'd like to veto that. I'd yeah, like to veto that. That's a little wormy. <laughs> yeah, a little wormy. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yeah. But 
he's got it. So anyway, so he's coming to the garage and I was like, oh, you could visit me at work. Because so, I'm in the along. garage. <laughs> he's like, yeah, bring your husband to work day. Anyway. <laughs> well, Jackie, thank you so much for spending time with me. This is amazing. I have to say, we've been, you know, we're doing a bunch of these and these are, and you know, we've talked to some fancy schmancy people yeah. who make some things in restaurants and things. I am more excited about these recipes <laughs> than oh, I hearing am. about. <laughs> yeah, hearing about that mac and cheese and yeah. the different versions of baked chicken. I am oh, man. I can I can email you the the working document, <laughs> and then you can look at the nine recipes that I have. Oh man, uh, I promise so. not to. I promise not to steal it. But I would like to see it because I now want to go on the hunt and see if I can't turn you on to some others that will make the calendar because this calendar has to come out. Oh, it'd be so good. I have to That's also great. tell you that because uh, I buy, I for for some time, I, I've liked to, there's fancy butchers you can go to to get fancy meat. Yeah. But I have always, I was like, well, I'm just going to get the chicken, the good chicken at Whole Foods because mm-hmm. uh, that's fancy enough. Yeah. And um, they have different steps at Whole Foods. This uh-huh. is my last story. The, 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 but the uh, there's step one sort of chicken that uh, is raised in a cage and has been uh-huh. fed vegetable. It's vegetarian, but it's just, you know, it's just a chicken. Yeah. And uh, step two, step three. Step three is sort of cage free, which just means that the cage door is open. Chickens aren't, uh, they don't want to see the world. They mostly don't leave their <laughs> yeah. cage, but they do like the option. And so, <laughs> but step five uh-huh. is... I did not know this because I bought a step five because I thought, oh, that's a nice chicken that's had a good life. Well, it turns out it's a chicken that you should only use for stock because it mostly died of old age. It's uh, oh. it's a pretty stringy chicken. <laughs> oh, and I no. come home and I baked it. <laughs> and Andy was like, is this a stage five chicken? Does it have stage five cancer? And I was like, they're called steps. And if you ever say it again, I'm going to be creeped out. And he, of course, has said it every time. <laughs> that is and, creepy. Uh, it's this- just... They just live live their life to the end. I think there's more to it. I think it's just an old <laughs> freaking chicken. It's so gross. It's a bad idea. It's just don't get step five. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, just don't bring just it get, into the supermarket. Just let it go. Just let it. That's yeah, a let it live. Kind of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> well, you're the best, Jackie. Is there anything we could tell the people about? Oh, well, uh, here's the thing. JackieCation.com is my website. And if you sign up for my uh, email list, Mm -hmm. which is harder to get on than it is to get off, quite honestly, because you have to find JackieCation.com and look in the lower right and sign up. Uh, That is three uh, clicks, three steps. And uh, but to get off, you'll get you get an email right now in quarantine. I'm sending an email out every week, Uh which feels excessive except for that it's the only way I can tell people about the zoom shows. Cause I'm, I'm working on a new album. I'm right. recording that album in December in Minneapolis, if allowed. Awesome. Um, so I'm doing uh, the, the Loveland, Colorado, the Milwaukee sh- club, if they're open and the Minneapolis, club. if all of these clubs are open, these are the road gigs I'm doing Loveland, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and awesome. I'm recording a new album. So I work on them every week on zoom, Jackie uh, yeah. to sign up for it. And I have two podcasts. I have the Doric forest, which I'm going to email uh, you about for to set up sometime next week. Perfect. If you want to talk for an hour uh, and all the next two episodes uh-huh. hilariously are about Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh boy, that is a big one, subject in my house. One with my brother Russ, who's an econ professor and loves Hallmark Christmas movies and oh, has made a spreadsheet <laughs> with 149 Hallmark Christmas movies. And the next episode is with Jen Kirkman, who has a more visceral response to the Hallmark <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> I don't I don't understand why Jen Kirkman wouldn't like that narrative of the girl giving up her future and moving to a small town. She, she loves it. She lo- she and matter of fact that episode was so funny. It comes out in like 2 weeks but That's great. She, she talks about cuz I I asked Russ and Jen Kirkman both to tell me their five favorite uh movies and uh-huh. Russ was like that's like asking me to tell you my five favorite Pringles. <laughs> They are cookie cutter and I like them, but I can't. But they're tell all you. the same. <laughs> right. And Kirkman was like, what I like about them is that none of these women, they're all professional women who yeah. learn how to work from home by the end of the movie. <laughs> right. Exactly. 
<laughs> anyway, the so that's the dork forest. And then the other one is the Jackie and Laurie show. I have two oh, podcasts. You're, the best. you're great. Thank you. You're for the having. greatest. I love you so much. You're the best. Thanks for spending time. And I'll see you uh, when you get back from Thanksgiving. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Jackie Cation. I hope you make that spicy cranberry relish. I hope you enjoy your holiday. Like I said, it really is a good time to celebrate. I don't care what the noise is. Turn the news off and enjoy your life. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you rate us. Give us stars if you like it. Pass it on to your friends. It's what makes the community grow and makes us all happier. Enjoy and happy holidays.